What is mass? Believe it or not, this is a very profound question we scientists cannot fully answer, yet. First of all, let me explain that there are at least three different types of mass. You have rest mass, commonly summarized by Einstein's famous E equals mc squared formula. Inertial mass, generally understood by Newton's second law, F equals ma. And gravitational mass, as used by Newton's law of gravitation, F equals g m1 m2 over r squared. So why are all these different types of mass all called mass? Well, that's because they all have the same units. Physics is all about how to measure things, such as the motion of two things relative to each other, and different things have, and different things are measured in different units. So, for example, apples can be measured in apples. So whether they're a Granny Smith, a Red Delicious, a Pink Lady, whatever, you can measure the number of apples you have. But apples are different from oranges. Or in a more physics-related example, electric current. So electric current is the flow rate of electric charge past a point, whether those charges happen to be electrons or protons or something else with electric charge. The unit of electric charge is the coulomb, and the flow rate is measured in coulombs per second. This unit is so commonly used, it's given its own name, namely amps. And amps can be expressed as the time derivative of coulombs. So that's applying the derivative function, which is d dt, to coulombs, for example, c. So you get dc dt. Now, the full equation derived from Einstein's theory of special relativity is actually e squared equals p squared c squared plus m squared c to the 4. This formula is derivable from simply assuming that the laws of physics are the same for everyone who is not accelerating. And p here represents an object's momentum, which for an object at rest must be zero thus giving you the famous E equals mc squared for an object at rest. Unsurprisingly, this is why this particular mass, this m here, is called the rest mass. Now, inertial mass, on the other hand, is defined to be the proportionality factor relating the force exerted on an object and its resulting acceleration. However, force is also defined to be the rate of change of momentum. Thus, f equals ma should more accurately be written dp dt equals ma where the p is basically the same as the p mentioned in Einstein's special theory of relativity equation. Um, of course, in relativity, time gets warped too, so, you know, the maths can get a little complicated. However, the equations show that units for both rest mass and inertial mass are the same. Therefore, they're both types of mass. You know, they're both effectively types of apples, in the analogy. Um, yeah, or, you know in the same way electrons and protons are both types of electric charge. Um, as for gravitational mass, Einstein's theory of general relativity assumes inertial and gravitational mass are the same. This is called the principle of equivalence. It's the foundation of general relativity. From this assumption, you can derive a testable, falsifiable theory, which is passed every single test we've given it, and we've given it a lot of testing. So thus, you have to conclude that gravitational mass has the same units as inertial mass, and therefore, of course, must be a type of mass. So, the question you're hopefully thinking to yourself should be, you know, is it possible for something to have inertial mass, but no rest mass? The answer to that is actually yes. Photons, for example, which are the boson force carriers of the electromagnetic field, they have no rest mass, but they definitely have inertial and gravitational mass. This is why photons, i.e. light, can be trapped by a black hole because they have gravitational mass. All right? Now, under our theories, we can predict what a photon's inertial and gravitational mass should be, and we can actually make observations which confirm these theoretical predictions. So we know that everything that exists in the universe is thought to have energy because if it has to interact with something that has energy, it can affect the energy, and conservation of energy requires it, therefore, to exchange energy with whatever it interacts with. And thus, theoretically, since everything that has energy must have inertial and therefore gravitational mass, everything should have inertial and gravitational mass. However, clearly not everything must have rest mass. The photons, for example, have no rest mass. So physicists have been wondering, why do some things have rest mass while others don't? Why do protons and electrons have rest mass? Why do they actually exist when they're stationary and at rest? whereas things like photons 
don't appear to have any rest mass at all, and indeed shouldn't have any rest mass because that's how they can actually travel at the speed of light. So these are very profound questions that people have been thinking about for a long time. And indeed, this is one of the main root questions answered by CERN's recent discovery of the Higgs boson. You see, under the standard model of particle physics, anything that interacts with the Higgs field, the field generated by these Higgs bosons in the same way the electromagnetic field is the field generated by photons, well, anything that interacts with the Higgs field, well, it gets slowed down and it can get twisted in such a way that it can retain its energy, yet not appear to actually move i.e. they can have mass without having to move, namely they have rest mass. So these are very interesting questions and issues that I will further discuss in my next video when I talk about what is a quantum field and more about this whole Higgs mechanism of how the Higgs field actually works. So stay tuned.